city. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we're in the woods and we're going to take some pictures of Pippi. Yeah, so guys, like I've just said, basically we're in the woods today. We're in a new location. I've never been here before in my life. Um, we're just gonna try and take some pictures. It's quite close to home, so um, that's good. Pippi's up there. We've got Pippi with us today. He should give us quite a fun, fun time. I'm not gonna be talking too much because we don't have as much time with Pip to go through things, but I'm gonna be shooting so that you guys can see through my screen again, just like we did last time and we're just going to find some nice autumnal pictures and shoot them so let's just go and shoot and we'll see what we get what i'm looking at in this location that we're in now is lines so i'm looking for lines that we can use that downhill line's quite good uh, that line's quite good we'll probably use that this line is very good as well so we'll probably put pips somewhere in the middle of this track we'll take a shot we're trying with us today the 85mm 1.4 Sigma Art Lens, which uh, hopefully is good. Who knows? We're going to give it a whirl. Obviously, I've got my little thing so that you guys can see through the camera, but what that means is that I can't put it up to my face because it doesn't work, whereas I have to look through here. So it might be a little bit shaky, but we'll make it work. Let's line us up because we've got about half an hour of light left and then it's going to be dark. So we'll shoot in the dark bit first and then move out to the light bit. So let's head up this way. Peep peeps. Hey guys, welcome from the future. So basically when I've edited this video, I've actually realized that it is really quite short and it misses out some information. So I just wanted to basically consolidate things that happened by voiceovering them. So I will let the video play, but when I feel like there's something really important that I should share with you guys, I'm gonna stop it and drop in a voice note. Wait, so she's not quite straight. Ready? So, what you can see on the screen basically right now is all of the settings on my camera. So as you guys well know by now, I shoot in, obviously shooting in RAW, I shoot usually low continuous um, as a drive mode. I use back button focus, so I have continuous focus on, on the back button. I use a single point focus method, um, which picks the area, so it's a tiny little spot. The bit on the screen at the moment that you can see that's green, that is the focus point. So I can move that around, make sure it's over her eye. You will also see a, a square appear, and that is basically the eye autofocus that's within the Sony cameras. It's a great piece of kit. So that's the settings that we're working with at the moment. Obviously you can see one 500th of a second f1.4 on this 85 mil Sigma art lens at ISO 500. Now you'll see in just a sec, that does turn out to be a little bit too dark and we'll address that when we get to it. Ready, steady, where's Bob? Okay. okay. Wowie, nice and short for Pippi. Cause otherwise it'll get far too exciting. The kids are a little dark at the moment. So we'll lift that up a touch. Pippi, I need you to go back. <laughs> wow, ready? So I've switched the view mode now so that you guys can see the histogram and so that I can see the histogram as well because the electronic viewfinder is really, um, lulls you into a false sense of security. So you can see I've dropped my uh, shutter speed down. So that's dropped down to 1 3 20th of a second, which is fine. And you can see at this point right now, the IAF box, which is the smaller green square, and that will track Pippi's eye as well when it's around the single point focus. Where's Ball? Where's Ball? Good, beautiful. Steady. Oh, so as she's moving her head down, you can see me manually moving the, the focus point, the bigger square. I'm moving that down as well. So it's moved from being a little bit above and it's moving down. I'll probably move a little bit further. I usually tend to move it until the IAF clicks on, but if I don't use a camera that's got eye autofocus, that's fine. Just move it to over the eye. Done. Good. Awesome. Okay. Good girlie. Good golly. Awesome. Let's go find another location. This lens is beautiful. Okay. 
we've got this little stump we're going to shoot from that direction because this way slightly darker background whereas that's really bright but we might switch through it and do it the other way um but yeah i'm going to try and get her to rest her head on this tiny little stump and see see what we get so let's give it a whirl Bippy, friends around down good girl good wait sure put me down good beautiful ready smiling ready. what's ball Beautiful. Okay. Wow. Hey, get it, y'all. Wow. Get it. Wow. Hey. This down. Pippy, this down. Good. Wow. Hey, ready? So at this point, you can see me make two decisions in camera very quickly. Now, because it's Pippi, I can't talk these through in real time. The first one is that it's too dark. So you can see the histogram is pressed up towards the left-hand side. It's not right up, but I would prefer to have a little bit more light at this stage. So I was going to bring down the aperture. But because I hadn't actually seen any of the pictures from this lens, I chose instead to keep the aperture the same at f1.6 and actually reduce the shutter speed. So that's what I did on this occasion. And then the second decision that I made was to do with the tree. So you can see the tree coming out, not of a head really, it's kind of the side of a head, but that means move. So you'll be able to see in just a sec the decision that I made to correct that. Actually no, screw it, we'll keep it 1.6. We'll drop you, ready? Down. Beautiful. Beautiful, so just put her head right where I need it. But she's been a good galley, wowie. Okay, super star. Super, bring, bring. She's doing outrun. Hang on, there's a log. Good, can you come up? Leaves, ready, hop up. Good, wowie. Good girl. Wow, good girl. Bippy come. So you guys could see just then, um, I got one shot there before Pippi moved again. So it, it doesn't always happen that you've got a dog that sits there and waits the whole time. Pippi is great, but she's not the most solid. And there was a lot of walkers. It was a very busy situation. So that just goes with making sure that you're ready for every eventuality. So you're prepared and able to take the shot when the dog is in position. I'm obviously positioning Pippi where I need her to be. Usually you would have an owner there. So make sure that you've set up the shot before you introduce the dog to it so that they're not having to wait for you to prepare yourself because that's boring and no dog is going to want to sit and wait for you to sort yourself out. Just say Down. Good, that was perfect. Hey, down. Good. Perfect, that's nice. Okay, get garlic. Right, I've got a shot, which is a good background. Steady. Good, come. You've just seen me call Pippi back and put her on this tree trunk stump thing. You, you'll note that I said steady and she immediately stopped before the stump. That's because she's trained to listen to speed commands. Um, but having a dog jump onto that would probably result in a sprained leg or a broken leg, depending on the speed it happened because it's got so many holes in. So just be super careful when you're manoeuvring dogs around to make sure that they are super safe and not going to get injured because you do not want A, that on your conscience and B, on your finances. So always be careful and look after the dogs. Uh, also, can we just take a second to appreciate how well behaved Pippi has been because I think she deserves a medal. Oh, super. Ready. Okay. Yay, girlie. So this picture actually could have been composed better in camera. Um, I was getting tired and we were losing light, so that I'm just making excuses now. But basically what we could have done is composed it better. So the original shot was wider than this and I've cropped in, which is something I don't tend to normally do. So yeah, I definitely could have composed this better in camera and got a little bit closer to her to get a better shot. But sometimes you've just got to get what you're going to get. So that is fine. Here you go. Wow, bring it here. So guys, I'm pretty happy with today. 
we've run out of light, so we'll call it for the day. I'm going to show you some of the pictures that we've taken today. And I have to say, as far as this 85 mil goes, I am pleasantly surprised. I didn't think it would be bad. I just didn't think that I would find anything that challenges the 105 1.4, but I think, I think I've got that. So um, I'm super happy with this lens. Awesome for closer woodland work. So where it's quite a tight background, I'm really excited to see what else I can do with it. And I'm super excited to edit the pictures. From an editing perspective, guys, obviously I didn't, I hadn't edited these when I recorded the video itself, but kind of run through the normal workflow. I am going to do another full edit video at some point, but uh, sadly, I only cover the specific steps on workshops. So it's the workshop guys who will have a breakdown of all of the steps that go into these pictures and pretty much exactly the same, but a lot of color changes and masking, radials, things that are already on the YouTube channel. So yeah, it's all there for you guys to see. If you've liked this video, please do press the subscribe button and click the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it gives you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it. We don't always shoot out, but when we do shoot out, we make it worthwhile. So if you haven't already, do feel free to have a look at some of the other forest shoot videos. I'm just gonna call my dog. <laughs> beep, beep. Come sit. Beep, beep, come sit. Good. She's a crazy ginger. Let's go home and we'll see you all again really, really soon.